are, uh, more day four. Hopefully these videos aren't getting uh, monotonous for you guys. But um, if we take a look at the building, uh, what we've done, we're, we're continuing our base trim. We started base trim down there. We started rake angle up here. Um, one thing, when you're uh, tying in your rake angle, the uh, the eave struts aren't always perfectly up and down. You know, it's a bent, it's a bent deal, and these ones were slightly overbent. So we grabbed a level um, and held it on the outside face of the eave strut and pulled it over before we set the screw um, on the rake angle. So that rake angle will hold it in place. The wall panels will pull everything over. Um, like I said, it's barely overbent, um, but just so we have a good uh, starting point. So while these guys are finishing up their uh, base trim, once they get the base trim here, we're gonna start sheeting from this side uh, to the right. When you're doing panels, there's a lot of unstacking, restacking, and organizing. The way I like to do it is to start with the longest sheet in the stack at the bottom. And usually when they come in the, uh, in the, in the big bundles, it's, it's the opposite. So uh, since this wall's symmetrical, I'm making another stack over here so that when we go to pre-drill those, we're just gonna pick them up, set them on the sawhorses, and, and they'll be set up. I'm doing a stack of 10, some guys will do more. These are 24 gauge panels, uh, cause it's, uh, uh, it's only a 50, 50 KSI tensile strength steel. Um, and this is the weathering steel. So this is gonna rust up. That's the look that the customer's going for. Um, and you can see on some of the tops and stuff, they're already starting to rust where they've just gotten wet. So I'm gonna pre-drill all these panels. I'm not gonna pre-drill uh, the very tops. Um, so I will stop pre-drilling here. I will have to come back and do some extra drilling once the walls are in place, but we're only gonna be coming down um, about a foot. In fact, I'll probably miss all these, but we don't pre-drill the top where it ties into the rake angle. Um, just because we're gonna have to come back and trim this and trying to figure out the angle on those screws, it's just not worth it. Uh, they're gonna be concealed behind trim and everything. So we're not looking for a perfectly straight line like we are on the outside. Another thing at the top on the rake angle and on the eave struts, I'm gonna use just one of our plain uh, metal fasteners, not a, uh, not a colored screw. I'm gonna try to save those. Um, and we do send a bag of the, you know, 250 or 500, depending on the size. I think this job has 500 of those screws. So we're going to use those up there, and then along the, along the, you know, on the outside of the panel, we're going to use a cocoa brown screw. So it's going to look goofy for uh, a little while. It's going to have a whole bunch of brown dots all over it, but, but the brown really matches the panel when it rusts. So doing our layout, before I start drilling or before I start you know, really getting ahead of myself, I'm gonna check my girt spacing here. Our girts are on two foot centers. Of course, the girts toe down. So off, off, of, the, off of the steel line, we're two, four, six, and then we're down an inch and a quarter. However, because the steel, uh, because the panel uh, sits below the floor uh, by an inch and a quarter, we're gonna have to further drop that. So I always like to take a field measurement I'm gonna come here. I know my first screw is gonna be at two and a half inches. My next one is gonna be just over 24 inches or two feet. I'm probably gonna go 24. Nope, I'm gonna go perfectly on 24. So because of the panel dropping down an inch and a quarter, uh, that's gonna let us hold whole foot measurements all the way up, so pretty easy. These panels, they get pretty hot. Um, and they'll, they'll eat up your Sharpie, so always keep your cap on. Um, I'll probably go through three or four of these doing these, you know, doing the panels for the whole building. The other thing that's important to know is, is what the bottom of the panel is. So since we're sheeting from the left side to the right side, uh, we want this uh, bearing leg to be um, on the right side. That way, when the next panel comes over, it laps here. Uh, so this is our bottom. And if we accidentally drill them from the other side, on the, in this case, it'd be okay because we just save them and use them for the other wall. But here we're laid out correctly, two and a half inches. And then I'm gonna work my way up every two foot, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, and I'm not gonna do this one because this is gonna be eave strut. So this is my end. Make a little E there so I know it's my end. 
at the ends of any panel, and that includes laps. We're gonna have two screws in each low pan section. So a screw here, screw here, 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 and here. Same thing at the top. In the intermediate uh, parts of the panel, or for the intermediate girts, I should say, or purlins, whatever, um, we're going to only one screw per low section. And we're gonna offset that to the lapping side. So this uh, is the side where we'll place one screw. So we'll have a screw here, here, and here. Um, all the way up, and then of course at the top, two for each one. On laps, some guys won't pre-drill their, uh, their lapping edge, I always do. Um, and we've made sure, also very important, that we've made sure that this is perfectly flat. You can use a block of wood and a little sledge to, to line everything up. Even on painted panels, all of the shears are an up shear, so uh, you shouldn't have any burrs or anything to scratch on. So, um, On lap ribs, we're 20 inches on center. I'm going to start my first one at two and a half. Same as the uh, same as the, the base screw. And then I'm gonna come up every 20 inches. And instead of working 20 inches off this, I'm just gonna hold 20 inches. So 20, 40, just keeps the math easy. 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180, and I'm gonna leave the lap screw out of here. Um, I'm not hitting my 20 inches, but we're gonna have trim that comes down here, and I don't wanna accidentally put a lap screw in that's gonna interfere with the, with the trim. All of our panel bundles have a cover sheet to protect the, protect the panel. He made a, you know, just a real janky cut there, no big deal, but I like to take a little piece of panel and hold it so I can mark my screw holes. And a screw hole here, 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 and there. So I know that those are all lined up. And here we're only doing one screw. Now when you're, after you're done pre-drilling, it's important, on, the, on these panels it probably wouldn't make any difference because they're gonna get damaged, that's the idea, that they're gonna rust up. But on painted panels, after we screw the, or drill these, we don't wanna slide the panels back and forth. Uh, there'll be little shavings that come up in between the panels and it'll scratch the paint. So uh, when we remove these, we're gonna lift them straight up to that way we don't accidentally scratch something. And on a building like this with all of these girts, normally you know you're skipping you know, seven foot, you know, to the first girt, five foot a girt after that, but here with the purlins on two foot centers, or the girts, girts and purlins on two foot centers, uh, we got a lot of pre-drilling to do. Oh, actually another thing, the panels on the outside are gonna wanna dip down because they're not supported with the bearing leg. So you're gonna wanna make sure that those panels don't drip or bend down as you're pushing the drill through, because uh, it'll start to walk as you get lower in the stack, the holes will start to come all the way out to the very edge. So uh, make sure you're supporting that properly. But I'm gonna get to this and let you guys go. Thanks.